let's stop mincing words on on Apple and stuff. They don't want your poor ass Ooh. buying their stuff. <laughs> Hello and welcome to This Is. We talked about why the S23 is a, just a boring little rectangle. Now let's talk about why the iPhone 15 will also be a boring little rectangle. Before we even talk about this, right? So clearly the iPhone 15 will be out later on this year. So right, August. September or October. Probably, probably. You know what? You're right. Matt's just firing me up right now. <laughs> Matt's firing me up right now. I may or may not be treating this entire episode as a way to troll Austin Evans, because Austin always is like, I'm gonna talk about the specs and I'm gonna talk no, about the thing. No, I was, I was in the middle of my point. There are a lot of great YouTube channels out there. This is, is not gonna be the cutting edge latest spec talk. What we wanna talk about is the philosophy. What we wanna talk about is, does the iPhone 15 even matter? So I would like to posit a question. Dear This Is viewers, what would it take for you to buy an iPhone 15. What will we need? Because I do believe that this year, we will see a little bit more of a substantial redesign of the iPhone. We've been on this existing sort of rough sort of body style with the flat edges and whatnot for three years-ish or so at this point. Matt, I would throw this to you. What do you need out of an iPhone 15 to A, wanna buy one, B, care I all? Would, I would never buy an iPhone, ever. I wouldn't use Apple whatsoever. Show me what's in your pocket right now. You want to see what's in my pocket right now? Oh my God! I got a Z Flip. He was ready for it. He was ready for it. <laughs> he doesn't usually carry the Z Flip. Matt really committed to the bit today. You notice my big tan line here? <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna go ahead and put this back on. So Matt, what would it take for you to transition from your clearly Z Flip lifestyle and move over to an iPhone? A lot of things I'm gonna say about the iPhone 15 is the exact same things I said about the S23. Okay. Hit it's me. boring. Sure. Because of how good they are. We can't have these like crazy leaps and bounds every year. Yes. We're, we're, we're at the point where we're not gonna get them. I think what iPhone needs to do for this time around, I think they need to differentiate their lineup a little bit more. Between they, pro and non-pro. Yeah, they already started doing that. So, okay, so, but hold on, before you yeah. expand on that, I'm just curious. So if you want more of a difference between the regular iPhone and the pro, what do you mean by that? Obviously right now, you know, you've got the difference in like the pro motion, you've got the additional camera. What more would you want? Like, are you talking about making the pro better? Making the regular iPhone like cheaper? Like, what do you both. mean by that? Both. Okay. So I think right now we, we do have some features, but I think they're all pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. Like sure. a lot of people don't actually really notice ProMotion. You'd probably do, but like not, it's not like, like night and day. Yeah, I agree. Like, I agree. And the build quality uh, between them, the, the stainless steel is I like, again- Everyone puts a case on. Right. Doesn't matter. I think if we can make a slightly cheaper base model, which is gonna be fine for the vast majority. You mean of like if they brought a mini iPhone at a lower price? That would be some real excitement. I miss the mini more than I miss most relatives. I don't know if it's gonna be this year, but I do. Yep. I, I I am firm believer that Apple is going towards the portless iPhone. I think we can pretty categorically say that's not the case this year. Not this because year. they've literally said already that the iPhone will have USB C. No, they didn't. Rumor. They did not say that. They did not say it will have a USB C. They said they will comply with the ruling, which is a very think, weird lawyer speak. No, 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 no. But but hold on. So uh, for context, if you're not familiar, so the European Union has passed a mandate basically saying that all smartphones will have to be on a standardized connector which seems to be USB-C, whatever Let the case me tell is. you why that's but stupid in but itself. It took so long for that to, ha to happen, because that's been going on for years now. USB-C is already starting to become a weird, outdated standard. Whether it's USB 2 speeds, whether it's USB 3 speeds, 3.1, 3.2, 4. That was a rant. I know, Matt's very upset. But here's the thing. They're gonna do USB-C, right? Like, they're gonna do it. They're no, not I removing the port from the iPhone this year. I think the, the, the non-pro, Yes. Will be a portless phone. If we're gonna get like a budget iPhone, I think that's one of the first things they're gonna do with it. Is port go portless because it's already the rumor that they're gonna be removing the physical buttons. Everyone's like, no, Matt, you're wrong on this stuff. Like, they wouldn't do this because I want this. They don't give a shit what you want. This is the, the largest company in the world. They are very good at making money. Yeah, and they already they making money selling you lightning things and they'll just sell you USB C things instead. Like, I don't think this is that complicated of a thing. Like, is there no, a because, possibility well, for yes, a future portless they're iPhone? Not gonna, yes. They're not gonna make as much money selling USB C stuff. Right. Everyone in the world already does it. That, that is so like, it's, true. Yes. But they've already got MagSafe, right? Like they've already got their own proprietary which, which wireless charger. Which uh, they're gonna try and make even more popular this time around. Yeah. Because they said, oh, we're gonna be releasing MagSafe into the wild. If they want MagSafe to catch on, they need to make that the standard. Sure. And what better way to make it the standard than by, than just by saying letting everyone use it. most of the iPhones that are gonna be out in 2023 yeah. or 2024 are gonna be required 
to use it because that's how you're going to get a bunch of third party people to start using the, the MagSafe. Okay, but hold on. Okay, we're getting really deep onto a port here. The iPhone for me, and I think for a lot of people, has become a real production tool. And having USB C will make a huge difference because right now we shoot iPhone video all the time, including videos. And most of the time you can't really tell or it's not anything that's like all that obvious, right? But one of the things that we do not do is shoot in ProRes because ProRes files over Lightning take hours to dump. Like it's ridiculously slow. I bet what you'll see is with the new iPhone 15s, the base models will just have like USB 2 slow USB-C, and then the Pro models will have the fast USB-C. But regardless, that's not the thing I think is actually most interesting about the iPhone 15. Remember, I started out by saying, what would make you switch to an iPhone? Clearly, Matt just wants to see the world burn and remove all the ports and make you sad. I don't I want just, to see this. You do. You I do. just am a you futurist. Do. I'm not saying this will never happen. I'm saying it's not gonna happen this year. It's not gonna happen for a little bit. You might be out here posing with your prop Z Flip, but there's someone else in this room who uses Android on a regular basis. Kenzie, as an Android user, what would it take for you to switch to an iPhone 15? If there was no port, you'd be out on an iPhone. Absolutely, that, that, that's so dumb. So I'm looking at a car right now, right? And so one of the things is like, unlike the super fancy trim, you can get wireless charging in the car. But other than that, you'd have to like, what? Like You have to plug in a USB to wireless charging dongle and then drop your phone on it. I'm not considering switching, but I would consider switching even less. Like I would just be like, your windowless car? Oh, come on. <laughs> My point is this, and again, I don't want this. I want to make it clear, I don't want any of this. But this is the track record we have. Yeah. That when Apple does something like this, everyone else in the industry, not ju not just cell phones, but automakers, sure. uh, accessory makers, they follow. When Apple first came out with the 30-pin connector, there was cars with a 30-pin connector. All the treadmills and whatnot at gyms had 30-pin connectors. iPod docks were in every hotel, everywhere. So if iPhone says, we're going to go portless, the war like, the industry MagSafe would be everywhere. It would it would rush to adapt. Here's my and then the next next year, you're gonna start seeing all these cars with more and more wireless sure. chargers. You already see a lot of cars with wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Yeah, okay, cars will have those features, but like who has a new car? Like, yes. But but that's never been Apple's concern because Apple doesn't want your poor app <gasps> buying their phone. Oh, I thought you were about to go there. Are you trying to say that yeah. Apple doesn't want to sell phones to poor people? Correct. You can't afford a brand new car? Correct. Apple have like a billion iOS devices yeah. out there. I know that they have a reputation for selling premium devices that are only for the rich mats of the what? world. Apple actually sell, I think, a fairly wide variety of devices right now. Look at that Mac mini that we've already talked about. You can check that video out here. That's one of the best deals in computing period right now. You've got the iPad, which has been like 300 bucks for years, which is a terrific device at that kind of price point. You've got the iPhone SE. Even the regular iPhones, I think, are pretty competitively priced with those sort of like mid to upper range flagships, right? So it's like for you to sit here and tell me that Apple only cares about rich people. I get it that they want. That's like obviously the most affluent demographic. who are going to spend the most money upgrading their iPhone pros every year. But you can't tell me that Apple is going to be like, oh, let's just ignore the 85% of the rest of our consumers who don't have brand new cars and cool smart homes. No, no, no. That's exactly what they're thinking. Because this is the example of trickle down, <laughs> trickle down economics that's actually working. They're like, okay, our affluent... Uh, market base are gonna buy the phone every year. Yep. And we're gonna come out with a new one and they're gonna buy that new one again. Yes. And then what are they gonna do with their old ones? They're gonna go and probably sell them and that's and let the poor people have our used phones that are a couple years old, which we have said for the record is the best deal. It's the best deal. Buying a used iPhone is one of the best deals in cell phones. We're not saying it's a bad thing, but that is clearly what Apple's philosophy is. Let the bottom 97% deal with you stuff because then you're still in the ecosystem. They're yeah. still on the app store. And this is what I do want, not what I think should happen. But like, I want the pro to be more pro and then let the actual iPhone be more consumer friendly. If they have to take away a port to do that, I think that I think that, that would be better overall. Apple does not want to go down to you. They want you to come up to them. They want you to adjust your lifestyle okay. yeah. to the Apple lifestyle. This is my theory on why the like the Mac and the Mac Mini are oh. so cheap, when is the iPhone is more premium. The Mac doesn't make them that much money. Period. iPhones make you money. True, but they because are, the, Mac's starting to become more and more of a priority. I will say it's not like it's, nothing. No, but the real money that they make is through the App Store, which statistically is coming from an iPhone. The whole value proposition, which we said in the S23 video. The value proposition of using an iPhone is if you're in the Apple ecosystem. I stay on my iPhone because it works with my, my Mac, it works 100%. with my iPad, blah, blah. 
So get you cheaper ecosystem things going through. So like a cheap Mac mini gets you in the door. That's exactly what I was about and to now, say. And yeah. now the when you buy an iPhone, yep. the, now you have a better value proposition. Well, I think the Mac and the iPhone are a little bit different too, because I think you look at that Mac mini again, I, I, we're going to talk about that a lot because I still think at $600, that is an incredibly good value. Oh, of course you look at that at 600 bucks. It's like why Chromebooks have become so popular. Is that like you as like a student, as you're like sort of your first computer or your first real computer, if they get you on Mac early, you're going to grow up knowing how to use Mac and you're probably not going to want to leave. Which is exactly what happened to me. I got a Mac 15 years ago yeah. and I haven't wanted to leave since because that's what I grew up using. Absolutely, right? But I think the iPhone is a little bit of a different sort of thing where, yes, the $300 iPad that tons of kids use and you've learned how to use iOS since you were, you know, roughly 17 seconds old, like that has real value because when you become a little bit older, you start going to school, they give you a school iPad. When you're ingrained in this kind of stuff and you're used to using Apple products, you're way more disposed to continuing to use Apple products throughout your life because it's what you've grown up with. That's why I think it's really interesting to think about about where Apple as a company are right now. I feel like we started talking about iPhone 15 and now we're just like onto a much more philosophical question because about like, how, does that, Apple care about you? But the, but does that, Apple care about you? Does Apple care about you? They care about you the same way that Samsung does. They care about you the same way that Google does. I, as in you're a, you're a consumer. You know what? I would actually a little bit disagree with that because I do think Apple think a little bit more of that long term, right? Like how many people have used Samsung devices for their entire lives? A little bit, but not really. And like with Google, been, it's just, it's, you just think about it differently. How many people have used Google products their entire life? Not necessarily the hardware because it's, sure. it's a different type of company. Whereas Apple like almost like they're investing in their future because they want you to like using Apple products from an early age and continue to use those Apple products and let them grow with you, right? They want to have a wide variety of different things and because Apple is a much older company and a much more established hardware company they've sort of built this up where it's like they're cultivating that next generation and I say that like that might sound bad but there's nothing wrong with you growing up knowing how to use something and feeling confident wanting to use it more and more in the future and you know what if you're 15 right now and you're just getting your first iPhone or probably not your first iPhone if you're 15 but whatever the case is no. you, you know what 10 years from now when you're making big money you might go buy yourself an Apple car and you'll have an iPhone Pro in it or whatever because you have such a strong affinity for the brand and you're completely engulfed in that ecosystem. Now obviously there are downsides to being sort of trapped in the ecosystem but I would also argue that especially as someone who spent a lot of time trying and actually trying to commit to some of the other ecosystems out there the Apple one hands down is the most cohesive where all the products work together in a really seamless way. Mm -hmm. I would argue that the Apple experience is a generally good positive one in a way that doesn't make me feel icky. I feel better trusting Apple as a company because I understand their motivations, right? They primarily make their money by selling me premium hardware. I understand that value proposition. I pay Apple probably a little bit more than I should for my new computer or phone or whatever the case is. In return, I've got a company who, generally speaking, wants to safeguard my privacy because they're not making money on the ads and all this kind of stuff. Whereas you look at the Amazons and the Googles and Microsofts to a degree of the world, you are the product. It's one of those things where I feel a lot more safe and secure knowing that the company who I am trusting my digital life to, at least on the hardware side, has more pure intentions. Now, obviously this is a major, major simplification right? But that's why I just think that while there's a lot of things I don't agree with the way that Apple handle things, I at least can understand the transaction. I give you a lot of money. You give me a very nice piece of hardware and you're not interested in harvesting every so are you thing saying I do online and all that. that kind of everyone stuff. else is just so poor that the only thing they have to barter with is not money, but their, but their, their bodies and their, and their data <laughs> and themselves. I didn't say that. Didn't and, say that's, that one. and that's what Microsoft <laughs> and Google, oh. and even Samsung exploit. Let me circle this all back, because why are we talking about the philosophy of technology and companies when we were supposed to be talking about, is the iPhone 15 worth it? Because these devices have all gotten so good that you can't sell them the way you used to do it. Because it used to be, I'm gonna sell you this product and it's better than this one because mm. look at this, it's X spec better. They could say like, Oh, this is five times faster than the previous generation. None of that actually matters on because it's just on paper. It's ma imaginary numbers at this point. You're not going to notice your, your app loading 0 0.0001 second faster than it was before. So the only way you can sell these is basically the way you incorporate them into the lifestyle. Is it the better uh, virtual assistant? Is it the better way it's going to like, oh, it will work with every one of your devices. And when you have the lock on the ecosystem like Apple does, yeah. That's a big, no, a way bigger selling point. The ecosystem point. is massive because, okay, if you think about it from like a, a broader context, right? If you look at cars, 
Generally speaking, if you say bought a Toyota, you were very likely to buy another Toyota as your second car or the next car. You know, you like you would kind of stay in that sort of track. And what's happening with the EV space is it a lot of that brand loyalty is being tossed out the window because now suddenly it's electric. None of it really matters too much. It's kind of the wild west. Well, the, getting the, what you I mean, the get. brand loyalty was just to Tesla because oh, they're the, they're, oh, yeah. that was the like, only option for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, that is a major disruption. But there are a lot of families who were Ford families for their entire lives or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And I think the tech space is similar where if you grow up and your family uses all iPhones or all Androids or whatever the case is, you're much more likely to continue not to be a one-time customer, to be a lifeline or at least a very, very long-term customer of the thing. And as a company, you have massive incentive to build a strong ecosystem to make sure that people like using your products, can use them all over the place. They work well together. I know it's easy to say like, oh, it's all nefarious because they're trying to build walls so you can't get out. I don't necessarily think that's the case, but they want to make it so nice it in here is that you don't want to go. Why would it not be? Because that's, again, how businesses work. These aren't charities. We've talked about this a lot. And like, the, the, we come back to the debate of like, why won't uh, Apple adopt um, a, a wider standard so they could work with Android stuff? Why would they? Yeah, this is a real debate. And I'd be very curious to see what you think in the comments below about the philosophy of Apple. Are they a company that's only for rich Americans like Matt over here? Or is it a company of the people? I'll for show the you people, my stub. By the people. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I feel like there's a part two of this video because I don't think we're done with this yet. Maybe we'll actually talk about the iPhone 15 in the next one. <laughs> We should talk about it at some point. Oh, did you hear that the iPhone 15 is gonna have 